Uh, greetings, Matt fans. All right, so today we're going to talk about um, a couple different topics, and it's all based on uh, vectors. And the first thing we're talking about is called unit vectors. Okay, so I want you guys to think a little bit. Um, remember we talked about a unit circle, and what was the what was the radius of a unit circle? You guys remember? It was one. So that's what a unit vector is. A unit vector. So let's define this guy. Is a vector with a magnitude. of 1. Okay? So, um, first type of question is going to say find a unit vector in the same direction as and this one's going to be Two comma four. So here's a vector. It's you know you can actually figure out the length of it, but I really wanted to have a vector that's going to point the exact same way. So it's if I would actually graph this vector, so write two and four. This vector is like that, and I want a vector to point the exact same direction, but I only want it to be one unit long. So basically, what you do, see a couple steps here. Okay, the first step is uh, find the magnitude if I find the magnitude you guys already know how to do that it's the square root of um, x squared plus y squared so 2 squared plus 4 squared so it's the square root of 20 or uh, 2 root 5 okay and then so that's the first step and the second step is to divide each component uh, from the vector, so divide each component by the magnitude. So basically, let me just move this down a little bit. I have 2 divided by 2 root 5 and 4 divided by 2 root 5. Now you need to rationalize. You can't leave it like this. Now, and before I even rationalize it, you guys agree I can simplify it. So this two goes away and it becomes a one, and that two goes away and that four goes away and it becomes a two. So I really, I'm simplifying one over root five and two over root five. And you guys are good at simplifying it, right? Multiply the top and bottom by root five over root five, and so I get root five over five, comma two root five over five. And there we go. That's actually my answer, math fans. That is a unit vector. It's pointing the exact same direction. If I would graph that, it's pointing the exact same direction as 2, 4, but its magnitude is only 1. And some of you guys are like, yeah, whatever. How do you know its uh, magnitude is only 1? Well, just to check it, and this is not something you're going to have to do, so you can, you know, just, just a good check. But basically, remember, a mag uh, vector, if I want to find the magnitude of that vector now, this guy right here, I just put it into the Pythagorean theorem. So it's root 5 over 5 squared plus 2 root 5 over 5 squared. And so I get root 5 over 5 squared. Uh, root 5 squared is just 5, and 5 squared is 25. So I get 5 over 25, right? And then uh, 2 root 5 squared is 2 times, or 2 squared is 4, and root 5 squared is 5. So it's 20 over 25. So I get the square root of 25 over 25, which is square root of 1, which is 1. Okay? So it just kind of shows you that's, um, I created a unit vector. I created a vector with a magnitude of 1. All right. Um, so let's do another type of problem here. It's got the same thing I just asked now to find a unit vector, but it's got a little bit more to it. So here, this is what the directions are going to say. Find... the following for the given vectors or given vector and I'm going to ask you guys to find the direction angle which 
just a little review and nearest minute and the second is I'm going to ask you to express it's an overpriced store in the mall uh, express each vector as a scalar product of a real number and a unit vector. So the number two is what we just did two minutes ago and number one is what we did yesterday okay day two uh, so it's actually pretty easy let's just uh, here let's so let me actually do a problem here now here's your vector it's four negative six okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say well let's get it's tangent of theta prime equals six over four right the yaks positive values so theta prime comes out to be 56 degrees 19 minutes and then of course it don't please don't put that answer you know it's four negative six so we're down in this quadrant here so we're going to do 360 minus 56 19 okay which gives us 303 degrees 41 minutes okay so that is our direction angle to the nearest minute and uh, now I need to find, it says express each vector as a scalar product of a real number and a unit vector. So basically what we're doing is we need to find that unit vector. So we're going to find the magnitude of that vector. So we'll call that magnitude of u. So it's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared, which gives you the square root of 52, which is 2 root 13. And then we divide each of those components. Let me move down a little bit. Uh, 4 over 2 root 13 comma negative 6 over 2 root 13 okay and again you know you want to simplify it before you even do anything so it's going to be really 2 over root 13 comma negative 3 over root 13 and then if I rationalize it multiply the top and bottom by root 13 over root 13 I wind up getting uh, 2 root 13 13 over 13 comma negative 3 root 13 over 13 okay now look what the directions ask you let's go back to the directions here it says express each vector as a scalar product now where do you get that scalar product scalar remember is the number in front of it well this is my unit vector and the scalar product of the scalar is actually 2 root 13 so really this is the final answer is 2 root 13 times uh, the vector 2 root 13 over 13 negative 3 root 13 over 13 okay that's the answer so truly if I had multiply these back together what would I get if I multiplied 2 root 13 the the magnitude times the unit vector pointing in the same direction as the original vector what would I get for final answer well you guys should be guessing this right here Okay, I should be getting the original vector because I just divided each one. So if I divided each one and then I put it back as here's your scalar times that unit vector, I better get that, uh, the original vector. Okay, so uh, it's really pretty easy, but uh, base, basically make sure you actually write this. Kids sometimes forget that. I asked for the scalar product. Now, if I just asked for a unit vector, you're only going to give me this. So, you, you know, read the directions. Don't just, like, automatically write, write stuff down. Okay, if I ask you for a scalar product, make sure you put the scalar next to the unit vector. If I just ask you for the unit vector, make sure you just give me the unit vector. Okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is kind of, re it's related to um, to vectors, and it's, has, it's we call this the dot product. Okay, and a dot product is used to determine angles between uh, two vectors. Okay, used to determine angles between two vectors. And this is basically how it works here. 
if here's a vector, I'm going to say vector u is equal to a comma b, and vector v is equal to c comma d. Okay, this is how you identify. It's very tricky actually to identify whether I'm looking for the dot product. Okay, very very tricky. So pay close attention. The way you recognize if there's a dot product in between, if I'm asking for the dot product, is you see ready? Everybody ready here? Is basically are you sure? Okay. Is basically you see a dot between them. Amazing how they call it the dot product and there's a dot between them as opposed to a triangle or a square. Okay. I'm being sarcastic here. Yeah, I'm always sarcastic. But here's the key here. This is not multiplication. Please write that down in your notes, guys. It is not multiplication. This is the number one mistake. Is kids go, oh, it's multiplication. They multiply the vectors together. There is multiplication in the dot product, using the dot product, but it's not strictly just multiplication. Okay? So don't do that. It's not multiplication. It's the dot product. So if you come up, during the middle of the test and come up to me and say, um, Mr. Curvis, uh, is that a multiplication symbol or is that a dot product? I will say, go sit down. You should know that. All right, so please don't come talk to me during the test. You should know everything. So anyway, this is how the dot product works. So u dot v is a times c plus b times d. Basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the x components together and I'm multiplying the y components together and I'm adding them together. That's all you do. So I want you guys to understand that your answer is not a vector. It's a number. Okay, it's not a vector. Because you're you're multiplying together and you're just getting one number. Alright, so it's not it's a vector, not or it's not a vector, it is a number. Okay, so let's do an example. It's really, really easy, the dot product. Really, 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 really easy. Just don't mess up with it. All right, so here's an example. If I said vector A, again, it's a good Canadian vector, is 2 comma 3, and vector B is equal to negative 4 comma 6, and I said A dot B. Amazing that dot product, that dot over there. Okay, um, basically you're going to say two times negative four, the x components, plus three times six. So you get negative eight plus eighteen, which is ten, and that is your answer. Okay, number one mistake is people go, oh yeah, they're, they're a multiplication symbol. Let's see, uh, two times negative. 4 is negative 8, and 3 times 6 is 18, and then they put that as an answer. Boo! Boo! Wrong! Boo! Don't do that. You're going to get tons of O's after the B, okay, if you put that on a test or a quiz. The dot product is not a vector. It is a number. Okay? Okay. So, um, now you're like, well, how is this going to help us determine angles. Well, we're going to learn something a little more about that tomorrow, but there is one thing I have to show you today. It's a fancy schmancy word. It's called orthogonal. Orthogonal. Orthogonal is a fancy word meaning perpendicular. Okay, it's what orthogonal is. So that's it's the kind of word that you say at home, you impress the parents, they give you more mashed potatoes because you're so smart, and they just it's just it's impressing very impressive word to use. So you want to use orthogonal. And now where does that come from? It's kinda of interesting because kids, you know, it's kind of a you know, people like to know like even prefixes and, and suffixes and et cetera. But uh, think about it, if you go to the orthodontist, what does the orthodontist do? It kind of straightens your teeth, right? So if the orthodontist straightens your teeth, basically, in other words, for straightening your, straightening your teeth, is he or she, your orthodontist, will actually make them perpendicular to your mouth, right? So you want your teeth perpendicular, or you want them orthogonal. Again, orthogonal, orthodontist, perpendicular, a uh, doctor that makes your teeth perpendicular. Right? Okay? All right. Anyway, um, this is pretty important. Vectors are 
orthogonal when the dot product equals zero. Okay, if you turn that sideways, it looks like somebody's yelling. Sorry. Okay. So um, basically, if the dot product equals zero, it's perpendicular. Really, really easy. So my question is. Are two comma four and six negative three orthogonal? So do the dot product. So it's two times six, the x components plus the product of the y components, four times negative three. So you get twelve minus twelve which if you have your calculator out handy and put it away, you get zero. So the answer is yes, they are orthogonal. Okay, really easy. Just do the dot product, kind of cool. Um, last type of question is, uh, I'm gonna say find n if the vectors are orthogonal. So here are your vectors, 5, negative 3, and 8, comma, 2n. Okay, again, it's really, really easy. You know the dot product? Dot product has to equal 0 if it's orthogonal. So let's do 5 times 8, the x components, plus negative 3 times 2n. And that has to equal 0. Pretty easy. So you get 40 minus 6n equals 0, move the 6n over, so I get 6n equals 40, and divide by 6. And if I simplify that, uh, 2 goes into 40 20 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times. So our answer is 20 thirds. Okay? Pretty easy. All right, and so the last kind of problem I want to do here, math fans, is we're going to find a unit vector. So let me put the directions down here. Find a unit vector in the direction of the resultant of negative four comma one and two comma five. So when you see this keyword here, when you see this word resultant, what do you think of? You got to think if I mean think even back in the day, if I gave you two vectors, you would do tip to tail or you do the parallelogram, but you would really to find the resultant, you add them together. I cannot stress that enough. You see that word resultant, you got to add them together. If it's just two vectors, okay. Now if it's resultant of I get like a scalar multiplication and everything, you got to make sure you do all that. But if literally I just gave you two vectors and I said give me the resultant of that vector, you're adding them together. Okay, please know that. It's really, really important. You're going to see that on a quiz. You're going to see it on a test. Very, very important. Okay, so if I add these guys together, negative uh, 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and 1 plus 5 is 6. This is my resultant vector. Okay, and then I said find the unit vector in the direction of that. That just means basically you're just doing what I did before to find a unit vector. So obviously i got to find the magnitude magnitude of that vector, and remember magnitude is the uh, absolute value bars, which is really the magnitude, right? Uh, anyway, that's equal to the square root of 2 squared using positive values, plus 6 squared. So it's the square root of 4 plus 36, or square root of 40, of course simplified to 2 root 10. So that is my magnitude, and then what do you do with that? Of course you divide each component by um, 2 root 10. So we're going to have uh, negative 2 over 2 root 10, comma, uh, 6 over 2 root 10. And, you know, we'll simplify it before I even rationalize. I'm going to simplify it so it's negative 1 over root 10, comma, 3 over root 10. And then I rationalize um, the denominators, and so I get negative root 10 over 10, comma, 3 root 10 over 10. Okay, and that's your unit vector. 
And if I ask you guys to have a scalar multiple, um, don't forget just to put that two root 10 in front. That's all you have to do. Okay? So that's it, math fans. That is uh, our day of, like I said, learning about unit vectors and, um, you know, a little bit of dot product, orthogonal. Again, orthogonal is a great word. Get extra mashed potatoes when you use the word orthogonal because it's a very impressive sounding word. All right. That's it, Matt fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.